It's amazing what you can find out on the internet when you just post a question. So I said, how many Christians believe in the resurrection? And lo and behold, the BBC in England had done a survey and found that one in three Christians said they do not believe in life after death. And um, they also found that a fifth of people who do not describe themselves as religious at all did believe in life after death. So here we are preparing for the resurrection and we need to address the fact that some, sometimes people, good people, just have doubts about it. They just really, did Jesus really rise? Now in these Sundays before Easter, the church asks us to see Jesus through the eyes of the Samaritan woman at the well, the man who was born blind, and in this gospel, Martha, the sister of Lazarus. When we last saw Martha, it was when Jesus came to her home to visit. And so she was, she was making this meal and her sister Mary was just sitting there at Jesus' feet listening to him. So Jesus could hear the commotion in the kitchen, the banging of pots and all. He realized Martha was upset. He said, Martha, Martha, Mary has chosen the better part. It will not be taken from her. So that was a kind of a, a revelation for Martha that she was missing something that Jesus wanted to give. It was a turning point in her life. So now, when her brother is dead, she, she is a different person. She's coming from a deeper place. And she's saying, well, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, that's an amazing statement, isn't it? You know, she was confident that he would heal. And it says in the, in, here that when Jesus found out that he was sick, he loved him, waited two days wherever he was before he came back. Why is that? You know, why is that? That's, that's what Martha was wondering. And we ourselves, when bad things happen to us, we say, why didn't God prevent this? You know, I've been living a good life. How come he didn't take care of me? What's going on here? The question why comes in every life as different stuff happens to us. And I have to say this, why is the question that God does not answer? St. Paul said, we have a peace which is beyond understanding, which means we don't understand some of what goes on, but we have a peace anyways in our heart and in our souls. And so Martha testifies to a great faith in Jesus Christ. I know God always hears you, but she's very practical too. So when they say, roll back the stone, she objects. Well, it's been four days. Physicians tell us that it's unlikely that any human being can do without water for more than three days. Lazarus has been in the tomb for four, and Jesus calls him out. Now what's going on here? The scripture scholars tell us it was more important for Jesus to manifest his power over death than to manifest his healing power. And that's, that's part of the message of this gospel passage. Do you fear death? Well, it's a great cause of anxiety for many people in this world, especially when you get a serious kind of uh, medical diagnosis. Paul says, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who has died for us. So. We remember this, the, the shortest verse in the whole Bible is Jesus wept. 
meaning that Jesus, seeing all these friends of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, kind of weeping and distraught because they can see the suffering of his sisters, Jesus himself begins to cry. And that tells us something, that when Jesus sees the broken heart of his people, it also breaks his heart. So this is the miracle that he performs through the tears in his eyes. This is the Jesus who, of whom the 23rd Psalm says, even though I walk in the dark valley, I do not fear because you are with me. Meaning that in our lives, when we are in a, in a kind of a desert place, when we are in a dark valley, we can be sure that the Lord is with us and gives us strength and gets us through the difficult parts of our lives. I've experienced that in my own life. The, we, we may not feel the presence of the Lord, but somehow we gain the strength to take the next step in our lives, and that's very important. And so Jesus calls out Lazarus. Now, why would a third of Christians uh, have doubts about the resurrection? It's a simple fact that if we cannot imagine something, it's very hard to hold on to. And we cannot imagine what eternal life is like. We just don't know. And the scriptures tell us that we don't know. This is in the first letter of John who wrote this gospel. In the third chapter of his epistle, he says, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So there's the scripture telling us it's hard to hold on to the idea of resurrection. It's hard for us to imagine what eternal life is like. We really can't do it, but our faith asks us to hold on to that. That that's a very important part of what our whole faith is about. That's why St. Paul could say, uh, if the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. What does that mean for us? It means that you and I have an eternal destiny. We can't imagine it, but it is what the resurrection of Jesus Christ is all about. So we came that we would have an abundant life now and a life with God in eternity. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.